To keep yourself updated, subscribe to Indigo Learn and click the bell icon and download our app OneFin to start learning on the go. Friends, before we start with the next question, let us have a broad understanding of what are the different types of conditions in an employee stock option plan. So, you have an employee stock option plan which has some conditions. So, there will be some terms and conditions given in the employee stock option plan. Now, this condition can be non-vesting condition or these can be vesting conditions. Now, what is the meaning of vesting and non-vesting? Vesting condition basically means those conditions when they are satisfied, the employee will be entitled to those stock options. For example, if we say employee has to work for 3 years, employee has to work for 3 years to be entitled to those employee stock option plan. So, that is a vesting condition. Only when the employee satisfies the vesting condition, the employee will get those employee stock option, stock option plan or the employee will be entitled to those shares under the employee stock option plan. Vesting conditions are basically those conditions which has to be satisfied for being entitled to the instruments under the employee stock option plan. Now, these vesting conditions are further divided into two types. One is called, one is called the service condition. Second one is called the performance condition. What is the service condition? I say you have to work for three years or four years. Some number, okay, that is the service condition. What is the performance condition? Performance condition is if certain performance parameters are met, then the employee stock option, then the employees would get those stock options or the stock options would vest upon the employees. So, if you say there are performance condition, performance condition could be if the profit increases by 10 percent, if the sales increases by 15 percent every year or if the share price increases by 10 percent, 15 percent or if the share price reaches some particular amount. Okay. So, performance condition basically measures the performance the condition is related to performance. Whose performance? Performance may be of the company, may be of the share price, may be of the employee. It could be anybody's performance. Now, this performance condition is further divided into market based performance condition and non market based performance condition. So, one is market based, for example, share price. So, the company may say, for example, Reliance, if the share price touches 3000, then we will give you stock options or the stock options would best. Now, share price reaching 3000 is not a condition which is controlled by the employees. It is based on the market. But of, but of course, there is an indirect relation because as the performance improves, the share price also improves, right? That is the market based condition and there are other non market based condition. For example, profits. If the profit grows by 15 percent, 20 percent, those are called non-market based condition, right? A broader understanding of this condition is sufficient, okay? More in depth of these, you will learn at a CA final level, not at the CA intermediate level. Now, as far as vesting conditions are concerned, where we have service condition, okay? Here, you will not revise the fair value. We have done enough questions on this. You will not revise the fair value. You will take the fair value on the grand date and only based on the service condition, you will measure the stock, you will measure the employee expenses, right? Now, subsequently, if you realize that less number of employees would be entitled, then accordingly, we will revise the expense. But fair value will not be ex revised. Fair value will not be revised. Number of stocks that will vest, that may be revised, okay? That is as far as the service condition is concerned. Now, coming to performance condition, if it is a market based condition, you will revise fair value on balance sheet date. Okay, so whenever you calculate fair value on the balance sheet date, on that date you will revise. If it is a non market based, again you will not revise fair value. Meaning to say, you will take the fair value of the grant date only. Okay. Now, at an intermediate level, most of the questions that are tested would be based on service and non-market related condition. This would, though it is a given, though it is given as a part of the guidance note, these are not generally tested at CA intermediate level. Okay. So, what you need to understand is, if it is a service condition, 
I will not revise the fair value. I will take the fair value on the grand date or of the grand date. If it is a non-market based condition, again, I will not revise the fair value. I will take the fair value on the grand date. So, in these two situations, I will take fair value of grand date only. I will not revise the fair value subsequently. I will take the fair value of the grant date only. Now, having understood this, let us have a look at the question that we are about to discuss. At the beginning of year 1, an enterprise grants 10,000 stock options to a senior executive conditional upon the executive remaining in employment of the enterprise until the end of 3 years. So, there is a 3 years service condition and the excise price is 40. So, what is the excise price? 40. However, the excise price drops to rupees 30 if the earnings of the enterprise increase by at least an average of 10% per year over the 3 year period. So, if the earnings increase by at least an average of 10%, the exercise price reduces. If the exercise price reduces, tell me one thing, is it beneficial for the employee or it is not beneficial for the employee? If, if the earnings increase, they are saying exercise price will come down to 30. If the earnings do not increase by an average of 10%, then the employee will have to pay 40 per share. But if the earnings improve, then the excise price is reduced, meaning to say employee will have the benefit. So now based on these conditions, what the employees will try to do, they will try to increase the profit so that their excise prices will, their excise price is reduced, right. Now on the grand date, the enterprise estimates that, please remember on the grand date, we are measuring on the grand date, the enterprise estimates that the fair value of the stock option with an excise price of rupees 30 is 16. If the excise price is rupees 40, the stock options have a fair value of is 12. Now, please remember, if the exercise price is reduced, the value of the options, the fair value of the options will be higher. Now, please remember, there are two excise price, 30, 40. At 30, we are saying the fair value of the option is 16. At 40, it is 12. Now, you might be wondering, sir, why did the fair value reduce? Please remember, 30 is more beneficial. If something is more beneficial, it will have a higher value. If something is less beneficial, it will have a lower value. If I further say it is 50, this may come down to 7. Sir, by how much amount will this price move? All of that you will understand at a CA final level. For now, just understand, if I can buy something at 30, the same share, the share does not change. If I can buy at 30, say there is a paper which says you can buy at 30. Here is another paper which says you can buy at 40, which is more valuable. This is more valuable because by using this, I can buy at 30. So, the fair value of the option is accordingly higher, right. So, now coming back to the question, we have two fair values. Now, we have more information. During year 1, the earnings of the enterprise increased by 12 percent and the enterprise expects that earnings will continue to increase at this rate over the next two years. The enterprise therefore expects that the earning target will be achieved and hence the stock option will have an excise price of 30. Now, please remember the condition here is a performance condition. What is the performance condition? Profit has to improve. Now, the performance condition is not market related. The performance condition is profit related. Because it is profit related, because it is profit related, it is not market related. Now, if because it is not market related, we will subsequently not revise the fair value at the respective balance sheet date. But, please remember, we will take the fair value of grant date. And this 16 and 12, both are the fair value of the grand date only. So, if the excise price is 30, we will take fair value at 16. If the excise price is 40, we will take the fair value at 12. Please remember, we are not changing the fair value subsequently. We are calculating the fair value on the grand date. And depending on the information that is being available, whether it will be 40 or whether it will be 30, based on that, we will take the valuation. So, at the end of year 1, we are saying 10,000 share options, fair value of 16 because the excise price is 30 and this is for 3 years period, so we will take 1 by 3. So, 10,000 into 16 divided by 3, first year expense will be 53,333. This is year 1 expense, okay. Now, year 2, during year 2, the earnings of the enterprise increased by 13%, first year 12%, now 13% means it will be more than 10%. The enterprise continues to expect that the earnings target will be achieved. So, in year 2, now in year 2, estimated excise price is again 30. 
so we'll have 10,000 here into 16 is a fair value into 1 by into 2 by 3 that is 50, 53, 333 into 2 if I do I get 10666, 10666, this is the cumulative expense. Cumulatively, we have to make a expense of 1,6663. So, expense for year 2 will be 106666 minus 533333, which is 53333. Okay. Then, in year 3, during year 3, the earnings of the enterprise increased by only 3% and therefore, the earning targets was not achieved. So, in year 3 it is only by 3%, so averagely it is not gone up by 10%, so it is not achieved. The executive completes 3 years of service, they have, so the executive has completed 3 years of service. Now, if the 10% target is not met, what is the excise price? The excise price is 40, so what is the fair value now? Fair value is 12. Please remember, fair value is not on the balance sheet date, fair value is on the, of the grant date and as per the grant date, the fair value is 12. So, in year 3, 10,000 into 12 into 3 by 3 which is 120,000 cumulative so expense for year 3 that will be 120 minus 1666 that will be uh, 13334 okay that will be the expense for year 3 Let's now have a look at another question. On 1st of April of year 1, a company offered 100 shares to each of its 500 employees at rupees 50 per share. The employees are given an year to accept the offer. So, on 1st of April, they have offered and they have one year to accept the offer. The shares issued under the plan shall be subject to a lock-in period on transfer for 3 years from the grant date. So, the shares will be logged in. Logged in meaning you cannot sell the shares for a period of 3 years. The market price of the shares on the grand date is rupees 60. Due to post vesting restriction, the fair value of the shares issued under the plan is 56 and the fair value per option worked out to be rupees 6. Now, here let us understand few things. We are on 1st of April of year 1 and the employees have one year that is till 31st March of year 2, they can exercise their option. Now, on this date, the market price is 60, but there are some restrictions on the shares, whatever shares the employees will buy, those shares have restriction. Now, tell me one thing, if there is a land and it does not have any restriction, it will have some value. But if on the same land, I put some restriction, like you cannot give it out on for commercial purpose or you cannot build it, build a building or you cannot have a building more than two floors or three floors. If some restriction are put on that, then the value of that particular asset goes down. So, here also, though the market price is 60, because of the restriction, the fair value of the shares is 56. This is not the fair value of the option. For that, we need to check the exercise price. Exercise price is 50. So, something of fair value 56, I can buy at 50. The value or the fair value is considered to be 6. This is more like an intrinsic value. Because... For fair value, we also need to bring in the time value of money and you know the changes in share price and all of that. For example, just to give you a perspective, I can pay 50 on 31st of March of year 2. On this date, I can pay 50 and get those shares. Now, the value of 50 today, the value may be only 47 due to time value of money. Correct or not? So, today if I have 47, I can put that into a deposit, I can get 50 and using that 50, I can buy those shares. So, there is a time value, there is a time value factor also, but we will not consider time value factor at intermediate level because it is slightly an advanced concept which you will understand at a CA final level, right. So, 56 minus 56 is the value. This is the fair value of the option. This is the fair value of the option and this is the fair value of the option which will be used to calculate the employee expenses. Now, if I come back to the question, it says on 1st of April, the company offered 100 shares to 500 employees. So, on this date, it has been given to 500 employees, okay. And each employee has been given 100, okay. Then, on 31st of March of year 2, 400 employees accepted the offer and paid rupees 50 per share. So, so here, my actual vesting is 400. So, my expense will also be based on 400. There is no need to calculate anything which is expected. So, expense will be 400 into 100 into 6, which is 2 lakhs. 
फोर्टी थाउजेंड एंटायर टू लैक फोर्टी थाउजेंड विल बी अकाउंटेड फॉर एज एन एक्सपेंस इन द फर्स्ट इयर इट सेल बिकॉज देर इज ओनली वन ईयर देन रिकॉर्ड द इश्यू ऑफ शेयर इन द बुक्स ऑफ द कंपनी सो द क्वेश्चन इज रिक्वास्ट एस टू इश्यू द रिकॉर्ड ऑफ शेयर नाउ प्लीज रिमेंबर फॉर इश्यूइंग शेयर द कंसिडरेशन यू कैन कंसिडर इट टू बी कैश विच इज फोर हंड्रेड इंटू वन हंड्रेड इंटू फिफ्टी प्लस एम्प्लॉ कॉम्पेंसेशन expense which we have calculated to be 2 lakh 40000 so 400 into 100 is 40000 into 50 is 20 lakhs so this 20 lakhs plus employee compensation expense of 24 22 lakh 40000 that we will consider to account for share issue so here what we'll do is first expense will be employee compensation expense Two lakhs forty thousand. Two employee stock option outstanding account two lakh forty thousand. Then when you receive cash for shares, you will say cash or bank debit. How much? Four hundred into hundred. Four hundred into hundred into fifty. You will get twenty lakhs. Then. This ESO is employee stock option outstanding account. Employee stock option outstanding account. You will debit by two lakhs forty thousand, right? Two equity share capital. How many shares? Four hundred into hundred into ten. So four lakhs. And. To securities premium, the balance amount so twenty two lakhs forty thousand, twenty two lakhs forty thousand minus four lakhs will give us eighteen lakhs forty thousand. So this is the accounting entry. The first entry I have just you know passed uh, for your understanding. Only the second entry is being asked in the question. Now here, the only thing you have to keep in mind is don't get confused between this fair value, fifty-six, and this fair value that we have calculated of six. Okay, if no information is given, you can consider fair value of share minus exercise price to be the intrinsic value, which can also be considered as the fair value of the option. Okay, this is the thing you can use for calculating if information is not available. Now here, instead of passing to these two separate entries, you can combine both of these and pass a single entry also. This employee compensation expense, instead of you know having it here, you can bring it and you can merge it here. And also, you need to transfer the employee stock expense account to P and L. So this is another entry: employee compensation expense, which is two lakhs forty thousand and two lakhs forty thousand. Okay. so this is another entry which you would need to pass